Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Bear County jurors see more evidence against the Air Force Major accused of killing his wife. Just ahead, a look at what's expected in day three of the Andre McDonald case. Severe weather caused significant damage across southeast Texas. Many are still without power this morning. We're going to tell you about the large and destructive tornado seen moving over Deer Park in the Houston metro region. Here at home after rain, we cleared out. It was a beautiful day and we jump right into hump day and it is cold this morning. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Wednesday the 25th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, very cold out there. 39 degrees. Definitely grab a coat or a heavier coat even. Mike Oster Hage, we say good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, and then on top of that, there's still a breeze this morning. So you got a little bit of a wind chill to deal with, but oh, it's so nice. And then the sea, the grass has been greening up a little bit from all that rain yesterday. And yeah, there was a we picked up officially 49 hundreds, just shy of a half an inch of rain out there at the airport. Some parts of San Antonio uh, got nine tenths or even a little bit more than that. And you know, inch, couple of inches all around the area, especially off to the east. And again, now we have those clear skies out there and some beautiful weather for the next couple of days. 40 here in town, 30s in the hill country, uh, 35 is the cool spot over there at Lost Maples. And like I said, a pretty good breeze, wind out of the northwest, 510, close to 15 miles per hour. We've got some wind gusts, 25 out there at Lost Maples. So, yep, wind chills right now. 31 is what it feels like at Bernie Stage. Freezing at Seguin, 33 New Braunfels, 37 out there at the airport. Port. And with this dry air that has now moved on in here, clear skies, boy, it's going to just be a gorgeous, gorgeous day. It's not going to get too hot, though. Jacket's going to be a pretty good idea pretty much all day long. Mold and Mountain Cedar both dropped down yesterday. It's going to be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar is after we've had the, the breezy conditions throughout the day yesterday as well as overnight. And uh, this morning, bottoming out at 37. So we're going to keep a little bit of a breeze. Keeps the, the air kind of stirred up somewhat. So we're not going to be as cold thermometer-wise as what we could get. But, of course, there's the wind chill to deal with. And then add about 20 to that, 50 58 for high temperature today. Plenty of sunshine, a little bit on the cool side of normal. That's going to be the case the next couple of days. And we do have another rain chance down the road and then another rain chance after this is a wonderful forecast when I can use the rain word in it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. It's uh, first of many significant criminal cases here in San Antonio. Jurors seeing more evidence against an Air Force major accused of killing his wife. This as the trial of Andre McDonald continues today. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what to expect today in the courtroom. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Well, jurors in the trial of a U.S. Air Force major charged with killing his wife were shown evidence of blood and a burnt pile found at the couple's home. Andre McDonald is on trial for the 2019 killing of his wife, Andreen McDonald. Prosecutors showed the inside of McDonald's home the day his wife was reported missing in 2019. A bear County Sheriff deputy was sent to the home to take pictures and collect evidence. She testified that she took more than 600 pictures at the home and collected 22 items. There was some like burned plastic on the ground in the rocky area um, and there was like a zipper. Prosecutors also spoke about text messages from Andre McDonald's cell phone. The messages from the day she was allegedly murdered show the couple was arguing about a business Andreen was trying to start in her name. The text also referenced an affair Andreen was allegedly having and a potential divorce. Andreen's burned remains were eventually found months after her disappearance. Prosecutors showed the jury the jury a video of McDonald at the hardware store where they say he bought gas cans and a hatchet. Defense lawyers argued this case should be a manslaughter instead of a murder case. If he is found guilty, Andre McDonald could face up to life in prison. KSAT, of course, will be live streaming this trial from gavel to gavel on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and on KSAT's YouTube channel. Mark and Steph. Thank you very much. Tornadoes hitting the south, heavy snow hitting the north. Here in Texas, about 45,000 people are still without power this morning. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports on the northern side of the storm, up to eight inches of snow can be seen in parts of the Midwest this morning. The risk for severe weather shifted into southern Louisiana overnight. The National Weather Service reported a likely water spout forming over Lake Pontchartrain, then moving onshore around midnight. 
Mother Nature sometimes is not kind. The same storm system causing extensive damage in Texas, tearing apart homes and businesses in the Houston suburb of Pasadena. We have four of us in this building when the tornado hit. A local CrossFit owner and his customers were forced to seek cover in the bathroom of his gym. The scariest thing I've ever seen. Like we, we were sitting there, I was trying to shut. We had an overhead door right here that blew off and I was trying to shut it and I couldn't shut it and all of a sudden it just blew out and that's when we ran to the restrooms and we just watched a building just come apart and then fall down. Had to fight out because the building fell on top of us. But I mean, it, you know, laws law were alive, we're good. And a dance instructor escaping a tornado as it tore apart her studio. I was just praying and all I know is they were, we were all hunkered down together, but glass was flying. The powerful winds also causing damage in Houston itself. The mayor tweeting a wastewater facility suffered significant damage, but is still functioning. Meanwhile, the northern side of the storm system is making the morning commute a mess in the Midwest, with snow from Indianapolis to Cleveland up to eight inches in some areas. The snow is spreading into Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and interior New England later today. As for those severe storms in the south, they'll be spreading from northern Florida to the Carolinas today. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. More gun violence in the U.S. US this time in Yakima, Washington. Authorities say three people were shot to death minutes apart at a convenience store early yesterday morning. A manhunt was launched for the 21-year-old suspect. However, police say he later shot and killed himself. Meanwhile, in Half Moon Bay, California, a suspected gunman is due in court today on seven counts of murder and one count of a tipped in murder. Investigators say the farm worker killed seven people in back-to-back -back shootings in a case of workplace violence at two Northern California mushroom farms. The Coast Guard has turned over more than 300 Haitians and two Cubans rescued near the Bahamas to Bohemian authorities. Now, the rescue happened over the weekend. The crew of a Coast Guard cutter pulled a person to safety who had fallen off a sailboat some 60 miles south of the Bahamas. After a search, the crew found the boat. Nearly 400 people were crammed on it near an isolated island in the Bahamas. The Coast Guard also rescued two Cubans after a military plane spotted them waving for help. Authorities say the Coast Guard has intercepted more than 1,700 Haitian migrants since October. Texas isn't looking good when it comes to tobacco smoking regulations, according to the American Lung Association. The association's annual state of tobacco control report just published gives the federal government an A grade for its media campaigns encouraging people to avoid or quit smoking and vaping. However, four states, including Texas, got Fs from the association for its tobacco tax policy. Texas failed on tobacco prevention, control program funding, smoke-free air, tobacco taxes, access to cessation services, and on regulating flavored tobacco products. Studies found that taxes are one of the most effective ways to reduce smoking, particularly among children, but no state increased its cigarette taxes in 2022. Smoking remains the most preventable cause of disability and death. Right now, it is 438-39 degrees. Your San Antonio Spurs taking on the Los Angeles Lakers, who just lost the game of their own last night. What Coach Pop is saying about the Spurs going two for eight in their last 10 games. Outside right now, checking with uh, the traffic cameras around town. This is one of a couple of incidents we're keeping an eye on. On I-35 at I-37, you see a flare line has blocked off most of that exit ramp. We're trying to get some more information for you. And let's look out there with live cam starting cold at 39 degrees. Uh, the nice warm up yesterday, but yeah, this morning very chilly. We'll be right back. 441, our San Antonio Spurs have now lost 10 out of their last 12 games and still sit in second to last place in the Western Conference with the Rack Rockets dead last. It's after their high scoring blowout loss to the Trailblazers in Portland. The team's three game West Coast trip now moves to LA tonight for back to back games with the Lakers and Clippers. In the game against Portland, the Spurs had eight players in double figures, including the entire starting lineup led by Keldon Johnson with 20. And right behind him, rookie Jeremy Sohan with 18. One of the key stats during the game, fast break points. The Blazers scored 24 compared to the Spurs, 6. We've got to concentrate on uh, better team defense and really uh, believe that that's a priority. Uh, we're not in a position where we can make that many mistakes defensively. 
Before the Spurs take on the Lakers tonight, Lakers had to face the Clippers last night in L.A. LeBron closing in on all-time scoring record set by Laker great and Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar last night. LeBron hit a career-high nine three-pointers while scoring 46 points, but the Clippers hit 19 threes of their own and got a comfortable 133-115 victory over the Lakers. Still going into last night's game, James needed 224 points to break Kareem's record of 38,387 points as the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. If LeBron keeps scoring at the pace he has set this season, that record could fall when the Lakers face the Thunder on February 7th. After last night, he just needs 178 more points. Tip off tonight between the San Antonio Spurs and the LA Lakers is set for 9.30 our time at Crypto.com Arena. And that's a look at morning sports. Time now, 4.43 and 39 degrees for now. And up next, you may have heard it before, bundle up or you'll catch a cold. Is it true? And with the colder temperatures here this week, what more do you need to know about the cold air and how to avoid getting sick? And next, an important consumer alert for credit card users everywhere. And welcome back. It's 445. Authorities say crimes involving skimming devices that are placed on credit card terminals and steal your information are on the rise. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an important consumer alert for credit card users everywhere. Watch as a man dressed as a construction worker places what police say is called a skimmer on top of a credit card terminal in a Fresno, California convenience store while his partner works to distract the store employee. The second uh, suspect uh, in just a matter of seconds pulls out a skimmer, places it over the point of, of uh, transaction uh, area. The skimmer then gathering data from unsuspecting customers who swipe their credit card, feeding the information to the suspects who police say they're still looking for. The U.S. Secret Service, which safeguards payment systems, says skimming crimes are on the rise. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert tips you need to keep your credit card finances safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. All right, we have a question for you. True or false, you can catch a cold by not dressing warmly enough on a cold day. The short answer is false. However, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris explains why you should still bundle up. How many times have you heard this? Put on a jacket or you'll catch a cold. Thing is, that's not true. You can't catch a cold by exposure to the weather. Being cold itself will make you sick. Viruses, however, will by causing respiratory tract infections. There are more than 200 viruses that can cause a cold, and all can be more likely to spread in winter because people spend more time indoors. That increases exposure to germs in the air and on surfaces, and those germs can make it into your nose, mouth, or eyes. Mucus in the nose also plays a role. It helps trap germs we breathe in before they can cause an infection, but. Low humidity and heated environments can cause the lining in our noses to become drier, which makes it easier for the germs to invade the body. A humidifier can help. Lavoit, Honeywell, and Baby Move models got top marks in Consumer Reports tests. They cost between $55 and $100. While cold weather doesn't cause a cold, there may be an indirect link. Our immune systems function best when body temperature is well regulated. So, to bolster your immunity, yep, bundle up and still have these wearing a face mask in a crowd or around sick people can help protect you and of course don't forget to frequently wash your hands marilyn moritz case at 12 news and let's look at the roads with trans guy here's that shot over at i-35 uh, looked like everything is okay there at this time we had problems there earlier looks like it just cleared up we got lucky yesterday we had some beneficial rain here in mm -hmm. san antonio but Mike says once those storms move east of here, they turned into some violent thunderstorms towards over towards Houston, right? Yeah, there were some tornadoes uh, reported yesterday. I know Justin at one point late in the morning was doing a cut in about a uh, tornado warning well off uh, in our extreme eastern counties. And yeah, down there around Houston. Mm -hmm. So and that's where the majority of the rain and that's where the, the forecast was to see anything strong to potentially severe. There was the, the small risk to the east and then that risk obviously increased as uh, as things rolled on so 
this picture. I mean, the, I've got a few of these to show you this morning, and it is just the, some of the most beautiful pictures there. Rain gauges, two and a half inches of rain just south of Hallettsville. That is fantastic. Picked up just shy of a half an inch. 49 hundredths to be exact out there at the airport. So that puts us at one half inch exactly for the year. Still an inch below where it should be, but we'll take it. And the great thing was now, of course, folks out to the west, you did not unfortunately get any rain, but everybody else, uh, you know, a little bit there, northwestern uh, uh, Medina County, three tenths of an inch of rain, uh, just about two thirds right there on the northeast side of town. Some areas around downtown picked up close to an inch of rain. And then, of course, we had more well off to the east. And there were these two bands in the morning hours that kind of sat right there. One up around Bernie, you picked up uh, in the northwest side of Bear County, about an inch and a half of rain and then more off to the east. But yeah, it was beautiful to see. And and the nice thing is then we've got a couple more rain chances in the forecast. So here's what it looks like outside. Lots of clear skies. You can see some beautiful stars out there this morning. It's cold 40 at the airport a pair of 36 is Kerrville Comfort as well as Bernie's stage 38 in Bandera. And then we still have somewhat of a breeze out there. So wind chill 20s and 30s out in the hill country. 37 is what it feels like here in town and Seguin at 32 and no, it does not feel like negative three in Divine. Somebody needs to fix the thermometer down there. Got a lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere as well. So we're going to have some gorgeous blue skies today. And uh, yeah, temperatures, we will bottom out at 37. The reason for that is we're not going to get as cold as what we could because we have kind of that breeze out there. So it's a flip flop. Tem thermometer won't get as cold, but it's going to feel every bit as cold with that wind chill. We're going to be up in the upper 40s, low 50s by noon, and then up to 58 for a high temperature today, which is still about uh, six degrees below normal. Nothing on the uh, satellite picture and Boy, that storm system that moved through here brought the front through here. That's a doozy. And look at all the snow up there on the Great Lakes travel plans. Make sure you check ahead for that. And for the next couple of days, we have some beautiful, beautiful weather around here and it is going to be on the cool side of things. Then we got, like I said, that next rain chance coming on in here. So 52 today at noon, sunny skies. Beautiful bit of a breeze out there. Northwesterly wind at 10 15 miles per hour and then 58 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow gonna be another cold one in the morning. Same thing on Friday. Lots of sunshine tomorrow. More clouds on Friday and then another chance of rain on Saturday. Probably not as good a chance of rain, but still. We'll have a few showers around here. Not as chilly in the morning, 64 in the afternoon. Early on Sunday, some rain. We clear on out and then another front moves through here. So that'll cool us back down. And then another chance of rain comes in on Tuesday and looks like hanging into Wednesday of next week. That's nice to talk about. Cool temperatures and some rain. Yeah, it's, it's what we need. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 452, 39 degrees. Big Oscar nominations for everything, everywhere, all at once. Plus, Miley Cyrus is back thanks to some flowers. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Get all gets all the Oscar no nominations at the same time. Plus, Miley Cyrus is everywhere on the music charts. For the latest, what's happening in Hollywood? Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> At the Oscar nominations Tuesday morning, it was a record-setting day for actors and filmmakers of Asian descent, leading 11 nominations for Everything Everywhere All at Once, and a Best Animated Picture nod for Pixar's Turning Red, a tale about an Asian-Canadian tween and the horrors of puberty. I'm a gross red monster! <laughs> Domi Shi wrote and directed Turning Red, telling me, this is a great moment, but it's important to keep it going. In the 90s, we had the Joy Luck Club, which is an incredible groundbreaking film. But then after that, like there weren't many films like that. Um, so it could always go backwards, you know. So. The Oscars air Sunday, March 12th on ABC. Remember that movie in the works about the life of Madonna starring Ozark's Julia Garner? Turns out Garner won't be taking a bow anytime soon. It's been put on hold after the material girl announced her upcoming world tour. She won't have time to finish writing, directing, and producing the film, but we're told she does still plan to make the movie at some point. Miley Cyrus might be buying herself flowers now that her single Flowers has debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles Chart. It's Cyrus's second chart topper. The last one, Wrecking Ball, hit the top spot almost 10 years ago. She's riding in a taxi back to the kitchen. Talking and happy to birthday to Alicia Keys. The chart topping singer is 42 today, while blackish star Jennifer Lewis is 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
And the time now is 457 and 38 degrees for now. Severe storms pummeled parts of southeast Texas yesterday. This morning, many are still without power. We'll hear from people in Pearland who lived through a possible tornado. Plus, a sinkhole opens up at a shopping center on San Antonio's far west side. We're going to have an update on the repairs that are underway to fix it. Steven is in the studio, and he's uh, right now, we are all looking at 37 and Jones Avenue. More to come right here as we get your morning going on Hump Day with GMSA. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It was a stormy night across big portions of Texas last night. We're going to take you to the areas now dealing with the aftermath of numerous tornadoes. Back here in South Texas, calm and cold this morning. Clear skies, 38 degrees at last check. Good morning, everybody. We made it to midweek. It is January 25th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. This week definitely feeling like January. Forecast has been all over the place, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, we, you know, had some warm temperatures. We had that rain yesterday and we, it was beneficial rain here. And, you know, talking about those tornadoes over there to the east of us, if you recall, Storm Prediction Center had uh, some of our eastern counties right there along Wilson County, including Fl Floresville up towards Seguin, maybe an isolated, um, potentially severe storm. And then that just jumped up about two or three uh, notches, if you will, and it got to the enhanced level off there around Victoria and further off to the east. And that obviously did uh, live up to its billing yesterday, unfortunately, with some of those uh, severe storms there. But for us now on the, the backside of all this, we have clear skies. We have cold temperatures. We're down to 38 degrees right now, and it's not going to warm up all that much. I mean, we'll gain 20, but still that puts us at 58. So we are going to be a good six degrees below normal later on this afternoon, which, yeah, just fantastic aquifer benefited from some of that uh, rain went up a half a foot yesterday of course the update accounts going to be coming out a little bit later on and the allergens yesterday now with kind of assume that some of that mountain cedar got washed out of the atmosphere with the rain. It's going to be interesting to see what today's count is, given the fact we had those northwesterly winds throughout most of the day yesterday, as well as overnight. And speaking of that, we still have that breeze out there, and that's giving us somewhat of a wind chill. Now, not much of a breeze out um, around Bolverde, Bernie Stage, Rio Medina, but then you look at Kerrville and Lost Maples, and those gusts even to 25 miles per hour out there. So we've got a wind chill of 25 in Lost Maples right now. Feels like 33 at the airport. 31 at Port SA. In other words, bundle up this morning because it's cold out there and you're probably going to need a jacket throughout most all of the day. Like I said, just because we're not only going to make it up into the upper 50s, despite the fact we have all that sunshine out there. And uh, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful day today. And then cold start again tomorrow. Stays on the chilly side, only in the 50s. Beautiful afternoon, a couple of extra clouds around here. It's not going to be as cool over the weekend. We're going to have a lot more in the way of clouds, especially building in here on Friday. We'll have a few showers around on Saturday and early on Sunday. Then we have another front moving on through here. It's going to be really warm on Sunday prior to that front, but that will cool us down. And like I said, we got a chance of showers on Saturday and then another chance of rain going into next week. So good looking forecast, cool temperatures and some showers. Love it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. Anything going on? Well, Mike, good morning to you as well. I would say that I'm more of a fan of the roadways today than I was yesterday, and I think drivers would probably agree with me because things are looking pretty clear there along 281 at Sprucewood, but we did have a number of issues out there yesterday, and that was likely due to some of the rain that we saw because of that dirt and grime that had built up over time, which made the roads a little bit slick there for drivers. But you can see right now there at 1604 at Pat Booker, things are dry, and in fact, drivers are getting by without any trouble. Now, earlier we brought you some issues there along 35 northbound at US 281 northbound where that exit ramp was actually closed. Better news report out there, guys. That crash is already cleared out, so we don't have to worry about it. But uh, another area that was causing a bit of concern was right up here closer to, into the northeast side, 35 southbound at Topperwine Road, where we did have a second crash that was causing a light buildup for drivers. But you can see now it's just a lot of green on the screen, which is Really a nice relief here for us in the traffic lab, but uh, you can see there and no other issues to report. We do have road closures to be on the lookout for, but for now, if you are even traveling into San Antonio, it's good news for you here. That journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound looks to be about 24 minutes at this hour. About 281 southbound, there was a little bit of a buildup earlier, and that's likely due to some uh, bridge work out there, but 27 minutes, so you, you're still in the green, no need to hurry, and 25 minutes on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So things look back to normal, which is a nice uh, way to start the morning, but we're going to keep a 
close eye on things and, of course, have those updates on road closures and gas prices coming up a little bit later on. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Developing this morning, San Antonio Police Chief Wayne McManus says a street crimes officer shot and killed a suspect late last night. Happened just before 11 p.m. at a Motel 6 in the 2100 block of Southwest, Southwest Loop 410, not far from Marbach Road. Chief McManus says officers patrolling the area saw a man next to a van with drugs in his hand in the motel parking lot. McManus says as an officer tried to handcuff him, the suspect pulled away, grabbed a gun in his waistband and fired two shots. That's when McManus says the officer fired back, hitting the suspect in the upper torso. Our Katrina Weber is following this story and has a live update coming up at 530. Well, a driver going through a Target parking lot on the city's far west side ended up in a sinkhole Tuesday afternoon. This happened at the Target on Loop 1604 near Highway 151. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with a look at that sinkhole and what caused it. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. Definitely a sinking feeling for that driver whose car tipped into that sinkhole last night while driving through the Alamo Ranch Target parking lot. So a water main break in the middle of one of the main entrances of the Target store led to large amounts of water in the lot. Witnesses told case at the break and the hole have been a problem since Monday. It's going to take a while to fix the problem. The plumber says he's waiting on equipment and the green light to shut the water off for some of the stores. Police and workers have used caution tape and shopping carts to block the road. One driver still managed to drop into that hole. Fortunately, no one was injured. The plumber working to fix the water main measured it and said the sinkhole is about five feet deep. For perspective, I'm five feet tall, so that water would be, you know, above my head. So if you're heading to that Target or Ross near Highway 151 and Loop 1604, use caution in that parking lot. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. A judge has reset the court date for San Antonio Councilman Clayton Perry. He briefly appeared in court yesterday. It was his first appearance since police accused him of driving drunk and leaving a head-on crash back on November 6. Now, he is facing charges of failure to stop and provide information and DWI. His lawyer told the judge he was speaking with a prosecutor to come up with some, quote, with some resolution, end quote. Now, so the judge reset his court date to March 8th. Perry returned from a leave of absence earlier this month. He is eligible to run for a fourth term, but so far he still has not filed to run for his District 10 City Council position. On the 8-month anniversary of the Robb Elementary School shooting, Senator, State Senator rather, Roland Gutierrez introduced four pieces of legislation. Senate Concurrent Resolution 12 or SCR 12 would allow Robb victim families to sue the state. SR 11 asked the U.S. Congress to repeal PLACA Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act, which protects gun manufacturers from being sued. Senate Bill 574 or SB 574 would create the School Violence Victims Compensation Fund and Senate Bill 575 would end qualified immunity for law enforcement. Because of that, my son's not here. These other babies aren't here. And two beautiful women are not here for their children. Those pieces of legislation were just filed Tuesday. Next, they'll go to a Texas Senate committee. State Senator Gutierrez says he'll be hosting uh, these press conferences weekly, joined by families of mass shooting victims here in Texas. There is also a new attempt to get Texas teachers a pay raise. State Representative James Talarico is pushing for a pay increase of $15,000. It's all part of a proposal in House Bill 1548, and it is described as what would be the largest teacher pay raise in Texas history. If passed, the bill would reportedly raise the minimum teacher pay to $48,660. That would be with zero years experience. Now, the average would go up to more than $73,000. Severe storms bringing potential tornado threats from the Gulf Coast to the Florida Panhandle. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes as parts of Texas, especially in the Houston area, are now dealing with the aftermath of tornadoes. A major storm is pushing from the lower Mississippi Valley, heading toward the lower lakes and to the northeast by Thursday, according to the National Weather Service. Tempests from this system have already left a mark on the Lone Star State. It happened real quick. As soon as, after it was going on, about 30 seconds, I got in the closet. I mean, it's scary. It's probably the scariest thing I've ever been through. 
The National Weather Service says a tornado was confirmed by radar near Pearland, Texas, Tuesday, just south of Houston. One driver in Pasadena captured a semi-truck over on its side on Fairmont Parkway and Pasadena Boulevard. So we have a uh, all hands on deck right now, uh, all our neighborhoods, just not this neighborhood, all throughout Pasadena, the tornadoes touched here, touched there, and we're doing everything we can to make sure all our citizens are safe. More than a dozen tornado reports were made as of Tuesday night, according to the Storm Prediction Center. Locked the door and was running towards the back, and then as I was going towards the door, the glass just came in, and then just the building started ripping apart. The tornado reports are considered preliminary until officials from the National Weather Service survey the damage today, and that information will be used for estimating the strength, length, and width of the potential twisters. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm John Lawrence. Thank you, John. 510, 38 degrees. Amazon is launching a monthly subscription for unlimited prescription medications. How much it costs and when it starts. Up next, how a community is coming together to support a woman and her four cats after a fire last week on the city's north side made her home unlivable. And let's look out there with a live camera story here. Just cold weather. We're at 38 degrees. We'll be right back. 514, welcome back. A fire just north of downtown left a fourplex unlivable last Tuesday. However, an elderly woman is still staying in her unit, still trying to tough it out without power. Now her former neighbors are trying to get her a better place to stay, even though they are without their home as well. For the last week, Mary Lou Sandoval says she's relied on the power of prayer and community kindness. Those in the area of West Lowood and San Pedro bring her warm meals and other essential supplies, but she doesn't know how much longer she can go without electricity. When science is okay, except now it's cold. Only water, plain water, the cold one. You can warm it up because, well, we don't have no heat. And we have also reached out to Red Cross and Christian Assistance Ministries to see what help they can And better be on time for your lift ride. Up next, how much you'll be charged if a driver waits more than two minutes partnership that will allow you to watch NBA games in virtual reality. Bread doesn't go bad after a day. So why would we just give it away when we could still sell it? Because, well, bread doesn't go bad after a day. And while donating it may be a small act in this world, on this table, Allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Rise it, shine it, sort it, smooth it, blend it, milk it, almond milk it. Grab it, try it, taste it, love it. Creamy almond pour and spoon it. Well, that's catchy as heck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, awake yeah. now. <laughs> we got upstaged by a silk commercial. <laughs> How's traffic looking, Stephen? Oh, man, so much better than yesterday. Yeah. I will say we had a pretty busy day on the roadways, but that was expected. We anticipated that. You know, we want drivers to be safe, so that's why we were on all platforms yesterday making sure that you were updated. Uh, Mike, Justin, and I were on that streamcast, so always have that KSAT app handy with you. But let's get a look around town today. Completely different story. The roads are dry, and it looks so nice out there. Uh, you can see not really a lot of traffic this morning. It's a perfect day just to maybe go for a quick cruise if you can and just enjoy some tranquility on the roadways, but uh, we did have our issues out there earlier along 30, 35 southbound at Topper Wine, and we did have another crash that did block off the lane along 281 northbound. Those have cleared out, guys, so we don't have to worry about that, but let's show you what the map's looking like now at 519. Lots of green out there, but you see that there are scattered construction spots to be on the lookout for. So just as a friendly reminder, make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. If you are traveling along Loop 1604 in the northeast side of San Antonio, we have bridge and barrier work. Now, remember, this has been going on for a little while, but we're going to see that work continue up until the weekend. So that's right. Friday, January 27th, plan your commute ahead up until Monday, January 30th. This does begin overnight. So late night owls, early bird commuters, 9 in the evening at 5 in the morning. 
left lane closure on Loop 1604 westbound from Gateway Boulevard to Union Pacific Railroad. But let's get one last look at the roads here on Transguide. Yeah, a lot better than what we saw yesterday, Mike, and no one is going to complain about some dry roads today. No, and we got dry roads for the next uh, couple of days, actually throughout the, the rest of the week, and things weren't too dry in this backyard there in Zagin, where just to the east of San Antonio around Seguin, you picked up a lot more rain. A lot of those uh, showers and some of those heavier downpours just almost were training throughout the morning hours going from somewhat southwest up to northeast. And but I'm sure all that just really soaked in nicely since we haven't had so much rain in a long time. It was great to see it now. All that brown grass is going to be turning green and so did my backyard. It was so beautiful to have that rain yesterday. Now we've got clear skies in behind and pretty chilly temperatures. 38 in town, 36 is Bernie stage comfort and 35 right now at Lost Maples. The exception uh, Stinson, Pleasanton, Canyon Lake still uh, hovering in the low 40s, and we've got very, very dry air in place in behind that front to move through. As a matter of fact, dew points drop down a good 15, 20 degrees. Uh, pretty much across the area as compared to yesterday, even though it wasn't that humid. We got the surge of dry air coming on in here. Now we do have a little bit of a wind chill, so clear skies, very dry air, but still that breeze. So that's actually preventing us from getting as cool as what we could get and also preventing any fog from forming up because had temperatures continued to drop down all this moisture in the ground, we might have seen some fog, but we do have that little bit of a breeze out there. And so wind chill temperatures are down in the 20s in portions of the hill country, and we're going to have lots of sunshine throughout the day. Temperatures will uh, stay steady, drop down a couple of more degrees this morning, then warm up nicely. Plenty of sunshine, like I said, up to 52 already at noon and then make it up to 58 for a high later on today which is still six degrees below normal. So definitely on the chilly side, definitely want to keep a jacket handy today. And the dew points are going to remain low the next couple of days, which means we're going to have cold mornings again tomorrow and Friday. Then the moisture starts to come back on in here. We're going to have more clouds on Friday. Humidity comes up on Saturday. We have another chance of rain on Saturday. Then another front is going to move through on Sunday, and that's going to dry us out and then cool us back down again once we go into the, uh, the middle part of next week and then we have another rain chance coming on in here by Tuesday, late Monday, Tuesday of next week, and that may actually be lingering on into Wednesday as well. 52 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, gorgeous, gorgeous day today and 58 high temperature. Like I said, jacket throughout the day is a pretty good idea and then it's going to be another cold one tomorrow down to 35. 38 on Friday, and we will be uh, only in the mid 50s then tomorrow, Friday, 59 degrees. Clouds will increase throughout the day and lots of clouds on Saturday. Chance of rain, I don't think as good a chance, but still a few more showers around on Saturday, early Sunday, then another chance of rain late Monday, Tuesday, maybe lingering into Wednesday. I took a chance, washed my car yesterday afternoon. Ah. I think figured I could get two or three days out of it. Yep. Okay. Or you were just trying to help everybody else get more rain. Hey, I'll do I do what I can. <laughs> right now we are at 523, 38 degrees. So here winning lotto numbers, pick three, two, two, one, fireball seven, daily four, nine, five, five, four, fireball zero. You cash five numbers, two, five, nine, ten, fifteen, mega millions, 33, 41, 47, 50. 62 with a mega ball of 20 mega plier four. And don't forget tonight is the jackpot for Powerball, $526 million up for grabs. In today's tech fights, Amazon Prime members can now get unlimited monthly prescriptions for a flat fee. The company launched RX Pass, a $5 subscription program with about 50 medications to choose from. Prescriptions will be delivered to your doorstep at no extra charge. Lyft users can get ready to pay a wait time fee if they're more than two minutes late to their rides. Lyft says those fees vary by location and that additional wait time charges may apply depending on how busy it is. Uber implemented similar policies seven years ago. And Meta is expanding its partnership with the NBA. 52 live games will be offered on MetaQuest, some of them in VR. Also, Meta's Avatar Store will soon be offering NBA licensed apparel. Good to see Meta will power forward with this new concept, but if it doesn't work out, I'm sure they'll rebound and pivot to something else. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day.
Andrew Dimbert is now the president of Dad Jokes here yeah, in the United yeah, States. Yeah, pretty, pretty clever. Now, I'm starting to think now he's at the point where he's getting help from his coworkers. Yeah. I, yeah, it, they're it, like, hey, how about this? Right. Yeah. That's very possible. They are enabling him in a big way, and we get the end product. Yeah. 527, 38 degrees. More gun violence in the U.S. Up next on GMSA, authorities in Washington State say three people were shot to death minutes apart at a convenience store. What police are saying about the shooting suspect. Plus, Big news out in Cibolo today. They're getting a brand new HEB. We'll give a first look at the grand opening happening later this morning. With the new year comes new perspective for the performing arts. And coming up on GMSA at 6, we give you a behind the scenes sneak peek preview into one of the largest local children's ballets and upcoming auditions. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. The man accused of killing seven people in Northern California now facing charges and due in court today. That as police in Washington State investigate a shooting they call random that left three people dead. The latest details ahead. Police shoot and kill a man at this West Side Motel. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why they say they had no other option. Coming up. Let's look out there with live cam. Very chilly this morning. I grabbed a heavier coat. Uh, it's going to be a cold one, at least for the early hours. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, January 25th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good week. Yesterday turned out really nice in the later hours. Yeah, everything worked out as expected. All the computer models handled this very well, and we had the rain in the morning, and then things cleared out really nicely. Windy conditions yesterday, and it's kind of breezy today. Then we've got the clear skies out there this morning, and yeah, you're talking about stuff. Grab a coat because it is pretty chilly out there, and we've got temperatures right now that are in the upper 30s here in town. Dew point stands at 31. One. So dry air, kind of a breeze out there. So we've got two of the ingredients to give us perfect radiational cooling. Clear skies, dry air, but still that breeze. Although I think the breeze is kind of helping to prevent any fog from forming up because we've got all this moisture in the ground. And as the temperatures continue to drop down, we could have seen some fog. But again, we do have that breeze out there. Everybody, with just a couple of exceptions, is in the uh, 30s as of right now. There is no wind, Balverde over toward Divine. Good breeze out there in portions of the hill country. So again, we may have to watch out for in some spots a little bit of fog here. Got some gusts out there. Lost Maples 25, 17 in Kerrville. So wind chill temperatures to deal with right now. 31 Port SA, 32 <coughs> at Seguin. And it feels like it's in the 20s out there in parts of the hill country. Mold is on the low side. Mountain Cedar is also on the low side. I have a feeling a lot of that was washed out of the atmosphere by yesterday's rain, but it's going to be interesting when the updated count comes out to see if the blustery winds yesterday and overnight are going to knock the, the that mountain cedar count up 52 degrees at noon and then 58 for a high temperature later on today with plenty of sunshine out there. Beautiful today, beautiful tomorrow. More rain chances as well. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on on the roads? Uh, hey, it's been an easier morning for me, Mike. Thankfully, uh, we are seeing a lot of dry roads out there and really not a lot of traffic. It's still pretty early right now, so drivers really don't need to rush out the door, but you can see 35 and 37. We have a few folks out there this early in the morning, but uh, we did have our issues that cleared out uh, within the next within about half an hour or so. So uh, no issues to report at this point, but we take you to the map and what I mentioned earlier, we're going to see some schedule road work in and around the Alamo City. But another thing we're also going to see are obviously more folks getting out there as the morning does pick up. But the commute right now, pretty quiet. So let's get you to our travel times if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio. Doesn't look too bad right now. Still pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound. 29 minutes is what your commute could be like. About 33 minutes for our friends that are traveling in from Lavernia on 87. And for our friends like Mia Montgomery down in Floresville, it's going to be about 28 minutes to the Alamo City. But let's get you back in rotation here. 410 at Perrin Vital. Yeah, it's a quiet morning, but we know that there are folks that have to wake up early. We also know that there are crews out there working to improve the roadways. We'll tell you what to expect expect and again have an update on gas prices that's coming up a little bit later on mark stuff thank you Stephen. developing now san antonio's police chief says there was no way around it that an officer was forced to shoot and kill a man it happened in the parking lot of a motel on the west side off of blue 410 near marrock road katrina weber is there with a live report and katrina tell us more about how this happened 
Well, in the words of Chief uh, William McManus, he says this was pretty straightforward. He says the man who was shot and killed actually had a gun and fired off some shots at the officers right in the parking lot of this Motel 6. Now, this happened a little bit before 11 o'clock last night. Chief McManus says the officers involved in this case were part of his street crimes unit. He says that they were patrolling in the area when they saw this man in the parking lot standing near a van with what appeared to be drugs in his hand. McManus says an officer tried to handcuff the man. He pulled away, grabbed a gun from his own waistband, and actually fired off two shots. The officer shot back, hitting and killing the man. So far, police have not released that man's name, but they tell us he was in his 40s or 50s. And the chief did caution that he has not seen the body cam video from the officer yet. So he says all of this information right now is just preliminary. The case is still under investigation. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. 535 this morning. Police in Washington state are searching for answers after another deadly shooting. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, authorities say a man killed three people in what appears to be a random attack before turning the gun on himself. More than two hours south of Seattle, another alarming shooting in Yakima, Washington. I've got one male gunshot wound, not responsive. We got two deceased in the gas station. Three dead in what authorities are calling a random attack at a Circle K convenience store overnight Tuesday. There was no apparent conflict between the parties. Uh, the male just walked in and started shooting. A manhunt launched for a 21-year-old suspect, Jared Haddock, who fled before police say he later shot and killed himself. Come here, hands up. Now in custody, 66-year-old Chun Li Zhao accused of shooting and killing seven and injuring another at two farms in Half Moon Bay outside of San Francisco. Though the victims were all of Asian or Hispanic descent, police believe the attack stemmed from a workplace dispute and not hate. Zhao was ordered held without bond and is due in court today. Hundreds in Southern California mourning the 11 killed at a Monterey Park dance hall shooting during Lunar New Year celebration Saturday. The victims ranging in age from 57 to 76, including 70-year-old Diana Tom. Tom's family remembering her as a hardworking mother, wife, and grandmother who loved to dance. And 68-year-old Valentino Alvero, a father and grandfather, his family calling his death a heart-shattering tragedy. These latest California mass shootings have pushed it up five slots to 26th place in a database from USA Today, the AP, and Northeastern University tracking killings of four or more people in the U.S. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Authorities are sharing more details about actor Jeremy Renner's snowplow accident on New Year's Day. Washoe County Sheriff's Office released its incident report on Tuesday, and according to that report, Renner was using his snowcat to tow his nephew's truck off of his driveway when the vehicle began to roll down the hill. Now, officials say Renner jumped out of the snowplow without setting the emergency brake, and when he tried to stop it from hitting his nephew, he was pulled under it. Investigators believe if the actor had set the emergency brake, the vehicle would not have crushed him. Renner is currently recovering at home. Nuclear power could help transport humans more quickly to Mars one day. NASA is working with an arm of the Defense Department to develop a nuclear thermal rocket engine. We don't know how much this will cut down on the travel time, but they say this type of technology has been developed before, but the program stalled. Tuesday, the agency said their first tests could happen as early as 2027. One of the fastest growing cities in the area will have its own grocery store this week. Has nothing to do with Mars. It's back here at home. <laughs> yes, HEV will open its newest store in Cibolo today. Sarah Costa joins us live with a preview. Good morning, Sarah. So this morning, do we say there everything's better? Of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, and that store is set to open in about 30 minutes. Well, and that store is located in the 800 block of FM 1103. So Cipolo, Cipolo is booming with a population of 32,000, about 10 times as many residents as it had 20 years ago. The store will also draw residents from other nearby areas of Marion, Santa Clara, and Shirts. Until now, the closest HEB is about 15 minutes away in shirts, and it's one of the busiest stores 
in the San Antonio area. So the 110,000 square foot Cibolo store will have a drive through pharmacy and offer curbside service and home delivery unlike the shirt store. It won't be an HEB plus, but the Cibolo store will feature an HEB brand shop. The store is expected to bring in 350 new jobs with an average salary of $26,146. We'll open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. 539, 37 degrees. With the new year comes new perspective for the performing arts. And coming up on GMSA at 6, we give you a behind the scenes sneak peek preview into one of the largest local children's ballets and upcoming auditions. And let's look out there with live cam. We're starting at 37 degrees. No rain this morning, but it is still cold. Grab that jacket. We'll be right back. Welcome back and good morning. 542 this week in the Children's Ballet of San Antonio will host open auditions for the stage production of Sleeping Beauty. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joins us live from the Children's Ballet studio. And Alyssa, tell us about this upcoming event. Yes, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. It is a big production underway and the auditions are scheduled for this Saturday. Love, let's go into a little detail. As you mentioned, Mark, it is for Sleeping Beauty, but this year it's gonna have a little twist. It's gonna have that San Antonio flair, that San Antonio flavor. And to put this big production on, it takes almost 300 people. So the open audition are calling for vocalists, gymnasts. It's calling for those ballet dancers and the information on what you need to know is listed right here. They're calling for auditioners between the ages of three and 19. There's also a QR code. We'll make sure we have that information on our website. But coming up at six, we're gonna give you a sneak peek, an exclusive interview with the Dance Center's founder and artistic director. And she's gonna tell you why this year it's very special because there will be some special guests coming in from New York to be a part of this year's production. We'll have all those details coming up. Thank you, Alyssa. Right now, 544, 37 degrees. And are you ready for a new pet? The Animal Defense League is next with a special friend that needs a new home. Well, since I like Nadia, we're going to go quickly with this because little Priscilla, she's a big girl. She is, she <laughs> is. But, you know, she's really cuddly, as you can see. Um, and she, she just, she's here with her brother Frank, so she doesn't like to be separated from him. Oh, okay. So we're thinking that her and Frank should probably go home together. She's seven, Frank is eight. Uh, last week he was featured with us. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we would love to see them go home together. Yeah, they're both uh, older dogs or say you can call them middle-aged dogs. So it's not like they're going to be jogging partners or running around the backyard all that much. But, you know, just to have a, a companion there to go for a walk with and uh, maybe hold, get a workout. And with that, you can, you, so, yes. if you want to set her down. Right now, not, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. She, she's sweating. a big, she's a big baby. So anyway, uh, what you got going on? Oh, actually, well, these little ones are seniors, but we have some moms that we need uh, fosters for, mm -hmm. some moms with puppies, and they're needing fosters for about five weeks. Um, in order for us to continue saving more lives, we need individuals like y'all to come in and adopt, but also foster, even if it's for a week or five weeks. In this case, we do have moms that need our help. Yeah, you can determine as much time as you want to take with them, mm -hmm. and it may be bottle feeding, or it's just helping to take care of mom as she is still nursing some of the little babies, takes a little bit, some of the uh, the load off y'all over there, right? Yes, yes, and that gives us more room and space for other pups to okay. see them. So, yeah. Well, if you'd like more information about all the fostering that goes on, and again, you can sit there and they provide you everything that you need, or little Priscilla, I should say big Priscilla there, <laughs> so 1130 in Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, Pet Smart on four wins, 655-1481. Thank you, dear. Chris. She's like, can I go home now? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, somebody... How about pretty Priscilla? I was going to say, yeah. I like the alliteration. Yeah. Couch, remote, TV, Priscilla's fine. My oh, kind of dog. Well, and yeah. blanket yeah. today. Uh, you know, when she was, when Nani was talking about uh, volunteers and fosters, mm -hmm. fosters especially, because all the shel big shelters, little shelters all around the area, when we've been talking to them, are still kind of feeling the residual effects from the pandemic when everybody... Wow got these, you know, pets, and then it's like, well, they can't, you know, take they have to go back to work, the they can't way. take care mm -hmm. of them, and they're so overcrowded. So, yeah, Foster's really big help.
All right. Thanks for the reminder, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven's got a traffic update for all of us. Yeah, things are quiet. Things are good. Uh, that's the update, guys. Really not a whole lot out there this morning. Just a little bit more traffic. We're getting closer to 6 a.m., so we are getting closer to morning rush, but thankfully there is no need to rush out the door. 35 north of Loop 410. We did have some problems. Those cleared out, so don't worry about that, but we are starting to see traffic pick up there along 35 at Topper Wine, one of the busier spots that we'll tend to see as the morning does get rolling on. But let's go ahead and show you the map because it has stayed the same all morning long. Lots of green out there, and I'm hoping it stays that way at least for the next hour or so. But, uh, you know, like when you have more folks out there, that's when things really start to take a shift. But uh, wherever, wherever you're going, make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. We have scattered construction, and if you need to head to the gas station, I have an update on those gas prices, as I promised. Here, uh, according to AAA, the average gas price right here in Bear County looks to be about $3.09. Around the state, $3.11. Now, around the country, we are seeing more than 30 cents than what we saw about maybe a, a year ago, $3.48. So we're definitely seeing that hike up there, but we know people have to fuel up before they get their commute going. So if you're like me and have to stop at the gas station before heading to work, that's what you can likely expect. But uh, let's get it back here on Transguide 1604 Petrenko. It's quiet, it's dry, and it's nice, Mike. What happened to those like 230, 240? I know. Jeez. We've been seeing more of that increase over the yeah. last few weeks or so, but. Not fun to go to the gas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. This is beautiful. Uh, four tenths of an inch of rain out there in St. Hedwig. We got so many pictures of rain gauges and then the beautiful blue skies in behind. That was just such welcome rain. Everybody's lawns are loving it. Obviously not a drought breaker, but it was very welcome. And there's more rain in the forecast, which is fantastic news. Clear skies out there. There's an airplane uh, taking off out there at the airport. Going to be a beautiful sunrise today. Very cold temperatures. Bundle up if you are maybe want to start the car and let it heat up a little bit and bundle up those little ones if they're having to wait at a, a bus stop. 34 degrees right now. Bernie stage so in and around this area may be actually below freezing right now. 36 Comfort, Rio Medina, 38 out there at the airport as well as at Randolph. And then somewhat of a wind chill to deal with. There's a bit of a breeze, not much, but feels like 31 at Port of Safe freezing Seguin, and it feels like it's the 20s out there in portions of the hill country. And we are going to have, like I said, nothing but sunshine today. Beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset. It'll warm up relatively quickly throughout the rest of the morning. We'll make it to the mid to upper 40s by late morning, 52 at noon and sunshine across the board. 58 high temperature today. Very nice. Probably want to keep a jacket handy, and that's six degrees below normal. Nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now. This is going back in 12 hours. Of course, all those storms were well off to the east of us by uh, that time, by 12 hours ago yesterday. And that whole big storm system, which really, really moved quickly. Remember, that some of those individual cells yesterday were moving at about 40 to 45 miles per hour. And then this whole system, which you can see is a huge snow producer up there around the um, Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, and that's going to continue up to the northeast. So they're expecting a whole lot more snow up there. And for us upstream, not much is going on the next couple of days, which means we are going to have some beautiful weather for the next couple of days around here. Then we get into Friday. Clouds increase throughout the day, and we do have a chance for some rain around here on Saturday. It's not going to be any sort of rain, not as much as yesterday, but still just that chance for some rain, which is good news, and that'll last into Sunday morning. Front comes in, clears us out, but we won't stay clear very long because clouds come back in here, and another chance of rain is going to move in here late Monday into Tuesday, and now this particular computer model wants to keep that chance of rain around even into Wednesday, and maybe a better shot of rain going into the first portion of next week. So it's encouraging to see we're now getting into a pattern where we're staying on the cooler side, and we get at least a chance of rain every couple of days around here. So the forecast today nothing but sunshine around. We're going to be up to uh, 52 degrees today at noon, and then a high temperature is going to make it up to 58. A little bit of a breeze and six degrees below normal. So like I said, jacket's still going to be a pretty good idea. Then tomorrow it's still going to be on the uh, cold side. We will be at 35 degrees, 38 on Friday morning, only in the 50s throughout the rest of the week. Not as cool on Saturday because of the blanket of clouds starting off a couple of showers around here early on Sunday. 70 on Sunday, then that front's going to move on through and it's going to cool us back down for the uh, first part of next week. As it, like I said, it's encouraging to see you know, an okay chance of rain Saturday, but then next week, obviously still a week away, but that's uh, shaping up to maybe be rainier. And it's the rain we needed. Yes, if we could just keep this going every few days, perfect.
All right, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 554, 37 degrees. Let's look at your winning lot of numbers. Pick three, two, two, one, Fireball seven, daily four, nine, five, five, four, Fireball zero. Cash five numbers, two, five, nine, 10, 15. Mega, those numbers, 33, 41, 47, 50, 62. Mega ball 20, Mega Plier four. Tonight's the night for a big Powerball jackpot. $526 million is up for grabs. Watch for the drawing during the night beat at 10. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest on the classified documents discovery, this time in former VP Pence's home, now raising questions about the system for handling these sensitive materials. And the new warning about credit card skimming, a growing crime, how criminals do it, and what you can do to help protect yourself. We're going to have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour at GMSA, you're looking for a change of scenery. We'll tell you about some easy indoor home projects. And then this is our one of our top stories this morning, an overnight shooting on San Antonio's west side that left one person dead. Katrina Weber will join us with a live report and checking Transguide right now. Uneventful morning so far compared to yesterday with all the rain we had in the area. The roads are dry. It is crisp and clear and cold. Mike's forecast still to come.